Let's have a look at this chart. Let's start with this. This is absolutely crazy what is going on in Greece and Santorini. So this is just happening the third magnitude five over magnitude five earthquake in just a few hours. And let's have a look here at the location. You see the blue stars. This is Santorini here. This is Amorgos. And look at the first star here. This is a 5.0 that happened on February the 9th, on Sunday. And then there's another one, 5.0, that was happening on February the 10th, on Monday. And then look at this, there is another star here, 5.3, at a depth of probably 11.8 kilometers, a 5.3 at 8 16 p.m local time and when was the other one just a little later 10 37 p.m so it's not stopping so if you look at the side here this is the 5.0 so the three big stars show three magnitude five earthquakes in a very short period of time and that's a first for this big earthquake swarm that started on January 26. So this tells us the magnitudes, if we just look at that, they are getting bigger. And if we scroll down here, if we go to the last one, the 5.3, that was coming with magnitude 4 earthquakes. They have it at 3.7, but the University of Athens has it at 4, 2, 4, magnitude 4 earthquakes. There's another one magnitude four so there's several there's another one four four point one you see the locations there's so many and in between three point eight it's in that cluster everything that is light blue has a depth of less than 15 kilometers so shallow depth guys this is really really crazy and i'm wondering whether in the next few hours we will see more of these stars so what the heck is going on guys so we hear this all over the news non-stop quakes leave the tourist island empty and its residents on the edge uh, so to speak because many live on the edges of these cliffs that are now at risk for landslides because of this continuous trembling so thousands of tremors over 20,000 tremors sometimes every few minutes have shaken santorini in greece and the reports that we have so far is that more than 13,000 residents have left the island out of roughly 15,500. We all remember the pictures when they were trying to get on the ferries, trying to get a plane ticket. So good thing is not too many tourists on the island because February usually um, is a slow time on the Greek island of Santorini. But peak time, very, very full. And overall per year, more than 3.5 million tourists visit Santorini annually. So, but they're you know, now we're after the second week of near constant earthquakes. I mean, there's travel warnings from the UK, from Germany and from other countries. Um, and it's unusually quiet on Santorini now. You see empty trails, empty pathways in these small villages. So at least 13,000 people have left. And that is good. That's very, very good because authorities are still of the opinion that there could be another magnitude seven plus earthquake similar to what it was in 1956 that also caused a small eruption and a tsunami so tsunami threat is definitely real on the island right now and that is interesting we hear from the island that oh yeah most of the streets are empty except for the occasional tourists most of them from asia interesting so are they coming because of that or are they just quite resilient that is interesting if i was a tourist i'd have left last week already thousands of tremors sometimes every few seconds minutes have jolted santorini that is 
only about 150 miles away from the mainland from Athens. And of course, there's also nearby islands that have the same problem. Amorgos, basically that thick earthquake swarm is between Santorini and Amorgos. And they have also sent now rescue teams to Amorgos to prepare for the worst, like with generators, checking buildings, checking safety, building safety there. We have already over 165-ish earthquakes of magnitude 4 just in February and they keep coming. While I'm speaking, we just had another one. So we're probably approaching 170 earthquakes above magnitude 4 and you see the graph here also that shows the distribution of how many earthquakes at which magnitude. And that is really crazy. So if we compare it with like last year, um, for all of last year, the whole year, there were only 90 tremors magnitude 4 and higher. This is a very seismically active area. This is the Hellenic Arc with active volcanoes with lots of fault lines, tectonic plates subducting underneath each other. So it is normal that there's earthquakes, but this swarm is absolutely insane. And we heard just today from Vasilis Karastatis. He's the director of the Institute of Geodynamics at the National Observatory of Athens. And he just said today, he said the outlook for Santorini, that is one of Greece's most popular islands, 2% of the annual GDP of Greece, um, remains unclear. And that's of course devastating for the tourism industry. Many experts say making a reliable prediction about what would come next right now with this kind of shaking that is going on is impossible. They don't know. They don't even know what's causing it. We know emergency workers have been deployed to the island to take care of the residents that have decided to remain on the island. But also they have boats on standby for possible evacuations. So some areas of Santorini has, have also been cordoned off completely um, because of these fears of landslides. And they have also brought in big, big sandbags, set that up next to seaside homes in low spots because of the fears of tsunamis. And also psychological help has been provided. The Hellenic Red Cross have counseled worried residents. And you have to understand, for over two weeks, for the ones that haven't left yet, it's constantly shaking and rumbling, constantly. And you don't know, will the next one be the big one, like in 1956 or even a volcanic eruption or whatever. This is pretty bad. Volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis. And psychologists are counseling these residents, but also priests. And that sounds like really end of day scenario, but priests have held prayers for the quakes to stop hasn't been successful so far, unfortunately. So they declared the state of emergency last Thursday and they said this state of emergency would remain in effect at least until March 3rd. They wanted to ensure that aid could be released quickly should something happening. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, he said that all possible action was being taken. He says, quote, we're preparing for the worst while hoping for the best. He said that last Friday when he was visiting the island personally. Many people decided to leave and that's a good thing. For example, one guy who owns a business on Santorini, he took his family and he didn't take his chances. He returned to his family home in Athens and because he has three young children and he said the constant shaking was nerve wracking and we were worried about the kids. He had hoped that he could return just a few days later. And now he says, I guess we have to live with the current situation. We can't change this. But others, and let's talk about the ones that remain on the island. Why are they remaining on the island? They had no choice. For example, another resident sent her children to the mainland, to a relative's home in Athens. But she stayed behind to look after her elderly aunt and uncle and this is great i mean there's lots of family ties 
for Greek people. They don't leave anyone behind. And the elderly, they probably don't want to leave. They're, it's, it's hard. It is hard. You've lived there all your life. So what this resident has done, so, you know, in light of a magnitude 7 plus earthquake, like 7.7 .7 in 1956, so she and her husband spent the night huddled in blankets as they slept in their car. So she says, quote, we were in one car and my aunt and uncle in another car. <laughs> so, and they also said that during bigger quakes, the car was bouncing. So... <sighs> Gosh, guys, it's their decision. I don't want to judge anybody. I'm just wondering if they're out of their homes already, is sleeping in cars that comfortable? Why not taking the car on the ferry and just leave and stay somewhere else until this is over? So official scientists in Greece are still saying that the fault line is triggering the current quakes um, and that fault line, and that's maybe a good thing, is different from the ones that has triggered the disastrous earthquake in 1956. Now, the key question is, if you believe this is just tectonic, which I don't, and there's researchers from Britain and German, I have released a video about this, they said, quote, we have evidence that these tremors are caused by fluids. So either hydrothermal or magmatic, but both is basically volcanic. So, but for the authorities, that's what they're saying. The key question is whether the current tremors constitute a seismic swarm. That's a sequence of tremors without a distinct main event, a main earthquake, or whether they are a precursor to a larger tremor of magnitude around six or seven. And usually it is, if we have many in magnitude 4, chances are increasing that we could see magnitude 5. If we have more magnitude 5, chances are increasing we could see magnitude 6. 3 magnitude 5 in just a few hours. Is this a precursor for something worse? That question has not left the room yet, so to speak. So there was a scientific committee that last week that said that the seismic activity was not linked to volcanoes in the area and that they ruled out an eruption. But you know, guys, even in 1956, it wasn't volcanic. It was basically a fault line, but it did trigger a small eruption bad enough at Santorini. What they've also done, they have looked at the seismic monitors that they have installed at the Colombo underwater volcano, just four miles, seven kilometers off the coast of Santorini. They have also installed new ones, hoping that they would get more clues. That underwater volcano definitely has a magma chamber. They just recently discovered that. That is as full as it was when Colombo triggered a devastating eruption. So, Interesting, they also found a small land rise underneath Santorini, where the last eruption was. So there, something seems to fill up there. So something's happening, probably magmatic fluids, fault lines triggering each other, a magma intrusion getting into nearby areas. With all that shaking, everything gets destabilized and brittle and magma is always looking for the ways of least resistance so it, it's finding ways to intrude into all these areas and the fault lines of course for residents that question will we have such a big earthquake again that is the biggest headache that they have and they're wondering they're worried about their homes will our homes withstand it will colombo erupt will santorini erupt again Residents are saying, quote, it's like a science fiction movie. And it is because that island also makes roaring sound all the time, humbling sound, weird sound, plus some rock slides that relieve some smoke-like dust clouds that look really like science fiction movie. And these earthquakes, if it's constantly trembling and making that sound, that is really scary. And who are these people that are staying? elderly people, but also many who have stayed work in hotels. But even though most hotels are closed, they're still there. They have been conducting annual renovations in the downtime, but also that is in limbo. They can't continue with that. So even if the earthquake swarm stops, that could delay tourist season 
as well. So because construction and repair, repair work was banned now during the quakes. These employees say, well, some employees were scared and they left and others are unsure about whether they even want to return in April for the tourist season. That's what the owner of um, a hotel, basically he owns three hotels on Santorini says, so they might have difficulties to get staff. What he reports, and that's interesting, cancellations with bookings, he says he hasn't received cancellations for spring bookings for now. Um, and he sees the quakes more as an annoyance than a danger. But be aware, if you have booked flights for Santorini, for example, should the flights be canceled due to a natural disaster? This is what I heard. Um, they get canceled. You don't get reimbursed unless you have a very good travel insurance, right? Because the airlines say, well, probably the hotels as well. It's out of our hands. It's a natural disaster. So check your travel policy, what's in there. And then there's this concern about overdevelopment that has happened. Too many buildings too near to the cliffs, some illegal, some not to code, some could be very, very vulnerable. That's why the country's environment ministry has halted construction in basically in the Santorini caldera, because that is the rim of an ancient volcano that gave the island its unique shape. We cannot forget get that. So that was halted already last November for one year because that ministry cited concerns about overdevelopment and asked hotel operators to also conduct risk assessments. So of course the current seismic crisis has revived the question about the stability of many structures there. And one professor said that probably a third of these hotels are not built to cope with false foundations, weak foundations. And then there's these pools. The water in the pool, if there's an earthquake, can amplify the movements and, and can bring these structures down the hill. So especially hotels in the cliffside areas of Fira and Oya, that is popular with tourists for the spectacular views you have there because you're right on the cliff, right? Um, they could be most at risk from landslides. Um, that's according to a geology professor at the University of Athens, who also said foundations are made of hardened lava and pumice stone will turn out to be flimsy. Yeah. And he says in, in those areas, a stronger earthquake could cause sections of buildings like balconies or swimming pools to collapse. So you don't want to be there when this happens if you don't have to be, if you're a tourist. It's, it's sad. It's devastating for the people of this island that live of tourism, but at least they're transparent. And I, I really give them a, a lot of credit for being that. I don't have the impression that no matter what, they want to get the tourists on the island, back on the island. They're careful. And um, there's other places that are not so careful. So the thing is, there was an earthquake swarm in 2011, not to that magnitude that we, we see here. Not at all. But even then, they talked about making buildings safer. But nothing has happened since then, guys. This was 2011. And that's why the professor, for example, says, now, oh, well, now they're talking about it again. But when the quakes stop, we'll probably forget about it until it happens again. And that would be sad and very, very risky. Because even when the quakes stop, the ground could be damaged and then whatever could happen, any disturbance again, and then stuff could come down the cliff. So guys, that was my update. I hope you liked it. If you did, send this video a like. And if you want to support the channel any further, buy me a coffee or two on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky website. Everything goes to my animals right now. For those of you who have been here for longer, it's going into Apollo's cancer treatment. So thank you for buying me the coffees. Um, thank you for everyone who has done that. And uh, for the supers you keep sending me here on YouTube, guys. Very, very grateful for that. Stay safe and be prepared wherever you are. 
I see you very soon with another update. And in the meantime, check out all the findings that I made, the research that I made. I released the videos. It's very, very interesting. Bye-bye.